Good afternoon. My name is Sonia Van and I'm going to talk about my... So my topic is a proper way of conflict organization of the past practice of the evening. I'm working as a gastroenterologist uh, in a military hospital. And this happened there 20 years ago when I first met with Damash. He was around 70 years at some moment and he's taking any problems for preventing stroke. Uh, he was brought to the hospital because uh, of severe gastrointestinal bleeding. We managed to stop the bleeding and after recovery, we let him go with a suggestion not to start his anticoagulation for a while and contact his cardiologist. One year later, about one month later, he didn't appear in his appointment and I contacted his family. And it turned out, meanwhile, he was, um, he was um, in the hospital because of a severe stroke. You know. I've never seen him again. And that was a point when um, uh, I thought that we had to do something to avoid such cases. Uh, and if you, uh, if you ask my vision that uh, I want to prove that resumption of anticoagulation therapy has a bigger benefit than risk. And as a mission, I want to convince clinicians to, to restart the anticoagulation therapy in time. Um, and how I'm going to do this? Uh, first of all, um, we started to work with the already existing data. Uh, we are focusing on the efficacy and, uh, and resumption, uh, and the efficacy and safety of the um, drugs being directed to more uh, anticoagulant resumption after a gastrointestinal bleeding. And after we turn to a clinically more interesting question, uh, how to do it in a proper way. So, from the safety and efficacy, uh, direct active oral coagulants, the so called drugs, are increasingly used to prevent and to treat uh, thrombembolic treatment. Uh, it's because they have a better safety profile than the white wing key antagonists and they are easier to use. Uh, so, they are considered to be safe. But uh, there has um, a risk of gastrointestinal bleeding, an annual risk of about 3 to 4 uh, percentage per year. And, uh, and for clinicians who are uh, treating these patients, they are also always facing the problems whether to restart the therapy or not after the recovery. Uh, we know from the previous uh, studies that anticoagulation with the real world is, uh, is associated with an increased risk of thrombembolic treatments. And on the other hand, we also know from a recently published meta-analysis that uh, if you resume the anticoagulant therapy, there's no question uh, the, the recovery bleeding is coming you know, significantly, uh, it's higher than a significant um, level. So, our aim is to determine the safety and efficacy of reusing uh, direct oral anticoagulants uh, after gastrointestinal bleeding. And to find the question for our, uh, to find the answer for our questions, we uh, formed a clinical question and the people, where the patient, uh, the, the population of the patients taking uh, dogs prior to gastrointestinal bleeding, and the intervention is to, uh, to resume the other dog and the and uh, the compress is no resumption, and we are observing the mortality, thrombembolic event, and bleeding as outcomes. And our hypothesis is that uh, resumption of drug therapy can significantly lower the mortality and the drug number increase. Well, with these answers, uh, we want to uh, support the clinicians to uh, have the decisions to restart the anticoagulation therapy. So, after the uh, uh, registration of the Prospero, we uh, did the, the systematic research on the uh, following databases. And uh, we get um, more than uh, 8,000 articles. Uh, after the duplicate, we will uh, the, the title and abstract um, um, selection. After the full text selection, we, we get seven eligible articles. So we started the, the data extraction. Unfortunately, it turned out that three of these articles, uh, the, the data were uh, published in a way that we couldn't get it and to, to, to our analysis. So we do send some mail, uh, emails to the authors so uh, that they can uh, let us uh, the, the data. So that was my first project. In turn to the, the second, where we are focusing on the uh, optimal timing. When should we start the, uh, the anti-operation therapy? So although we know all of these about the safety and efficacy of this uh, uh, therapy, um, and a recently published meta-analysis said that up to 50% of the patients uh, on drugs has a permanent discontinuation after the gastrointestinal bleeding. And why do so? It, it, 
because the, the clinicians have a bigger fear from the, the bleedings than from the, the, from the um, stroke. Um, but if we take a look at the, the um, study in Qatar from 2015, where the authors focus on the long term uh, outcomes and the hard outcomes like most of it, we can clearly see the difference between the two groups. Uh, who has re uh, resumed the therapy, the, the, their mom, and why uh, them didn't resume the therapy. So, um, there's no question, actually, and the, the, some, uh, this was uh, considered by the several gastroenterologists and cardiologists uh, associations, and they uh, published their guidelines, and they had some suggestions to restart the anticoagulation therapy. But also some got some suggestions how, but there there is no and uh, no uh, high quality data at the background. So our aim is to determine the idle timing of drug therapy, presuming my patient will be a gastrointestinal bleeding limb, and we would like to do it in a high quality uh, randomized control trial. Because I forgot to mention there is uh, there is no randomized trial in the um, at all on this topic. So we form a clinical question in the PICO uh, framework, and we uh, the population is the same just like in the others, uh, other projects. And the intervention would be the early resumption, and co uh, compared to the late resumption. And we also uh, uh, would like to observe the repeating drug level given the more certainty. And our hypothesis is that early resumption of the therapy uh, is superior to just like in the uh, late resumption. So the study design will be a multi-center randomized to one trial uh, and we would like to include only adults who were only uh, already uh, taking drugs prior to the gastrointestinal bleeding to have a uh, major gastrointestinal bleeding and uh, it, it was proven by endoscopists and if necessary it was treated. Uh, and on the other hand we would like to include all those patients who have high risk, very high risk for trembambolic events so they can't wait until three days. They need a uh, low medical weight uh, heparin bridging treatment. And also those who have a very high risk for ring bleeding. Uh, and for sure those by whom the anticoagulation therapy can be stopped without any consequences. So the arm will be the uh, early resumption and late resumption. And we are observing as a primary arm point the uh, ring bleeding in the third days of bleeding. And the secondary outcomes that you can see here, and we'll follow up these patients um, until that month. So, um, our aim is to, uh, my aim is to finish the first project until April and the second one to, to June, so uh, we can start the uh, randomized trial in the next September. Uh, and there's a quote I've shown me, uh, one from CSW is that aim at heaven and you will get earth from it, aim at earth and you will get it. Thank you very much. Do it in, in uh, just uh, to so 
actually we want to prove that by those patients and, and for, for most of the, the majority of the patients you can start for sure. And we also exclude them if you see here that those who are really in high risk for, for repeating. And on the other hand, uh, what I wanted to mention, there are some, uh, some uh, studies uh, just recently published this year and last year uh, when they uh, wanted to see what's the difference between resuming the therapy in four days after seven days and, and 12 days. They are also retrospective. But uh, they found out at the end, it turned out there is no, no, no real difference. Who, what, and they said the, the problem is rather than with, with the comorbidities. And, uh, and also, uh, it can be a problem whether the endoscopy was, uh, uh, the endoscopy and the intervention was prepared in a good way. So, and not, not necessarily just because you, you get the interpreter back and the data uh, free. Yeah, that is, thank you for your answer. That's a reminder for comment regarding this one. I was always fascinated the numbers, the events, because of course you need to use them for the centers of calculation in your study. And uh, I'm curious. But the bleeding rates is about 10 15 percentage. So it's quite high. Most of the, I can't really tell you the, the exact number. So I think, but we know from Matthew's uh, presentation that it can be a bit high. Are you aware of any similar study being done but not published? And you said that your systematic uh, search did not identify any completed and published RCT. Is there any other effort out there to, to find that question for this important answer? Yes, there is only one randomized trial started two years ago in Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, they did that way um, to, that uh, so there is a guideline, the Asian Pacific guideline, where they suggest we start the therapy as soon as you, you achieve the stability. And they are doing it in that way. So uh, in that RCT, they run arm uh, in, in the first arm, they give back the anticoagulation, uh, especially the dogs, on the very first day after the endoscopy. On the other arm, they give back the, the, uh, the therapy between the third and fourth day. Not seven and three, they are the very first and, the, and then the third day. And they said it's because if you do the endoscopy well, you can, you can make it and you can decrease the, 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 the possibility of, uh, of a stroke. This actually brings me to my question. I wanted to ask, is there a specific reason that you chose three and seven days? I don't know if you mind me that Seven days is because the European guidelines also said that at least the seventh day you have to, supply, uh, to stop it. Uh, three days, we've chosen three days because uh, in the earlier publications they showed that the, the rate of the re-bleeding, uh, the majority of the re-bleeding comes on uh, in the very first three days. Uh, and the publications, like in the last five years or ten years, they are telling that, okay, but the endoscopy is uh, improved and you can treat the, those patients as not, not necessarily coming to the, in the very first day. So, um, if they, do, uh, if they um, did a uh, second uh, endoscopy after the first one, they, they've seen that they, especially in ulcers, uh, the uh, um, uh, healed a lot in the very first day, uh, three days. So actually, that, that's the point we want to, to start in the third day. Uh, actually, you probably uh, answered by my question because the three days and, and seven days is a couple of days only three or four days difference in the randomized trial. For me, uh, I don't know that it, it could be or it will be some significance or, or something like that. But even if, if you if you uh, have data regarding in the Hong Kong group, they, they make even even shorter. I, I, I don't know uh, are there any sense uh, or not can happen a lot of stroke in, in, in this couple of days, really? Not uh, a lot, of, but if, if we consider that maybe just one or two, but uh, a, a longer um, period, I mean, uh, we can treat uh, gastrointestinal bleeding in a better way than if the patient already has a stroke. 
I mean, uh, the, the bleeding comes in the, in the first days, the first week, 10 to 15 percent or something like that. But, but uh, what is the timing of the thrombosis or the cardiovascular risk? Probably it comes later on. There's two, two, two things to consider. Uh, first, uh, there are some articles uh, regarding the topic that it could be a rebound effect after withholding the drugs as well. And there are some cases. There are some cases where, where the stroke comes in the very first five days or three days. Not, a, not for sure, not the, the majority. The majority comes from the second week, maybe. Or, but, it's, uh, but for sure, there are some cases where we can prevent. And if. if yeah, that's. I feel tempted to chirp in all week. We are doing this project together. And so I, I, rather than saying, I'm asking you, are you wanting to prove that it is. Safe to restart from the repeating point of view, or are we trying to prove that it reduces morbidity and mortality from thrombotic events? So which is the more important question of the study? I think that explains that would explain a lot. Actually, my our primary outcome is the repeating days So we want to prove that to be safe. I mean, this is amazing, I mean, that you have a very good, exciting discussion, I think. And now as we look at this, I mean, that maybe partly, I mean, this is the, this is the reply. I mean, that there were actually 8,000 studies which are somewhat related. And then you ended with four which had actually reasonable, or seven, which seem to have reasonable results. And there are three which turn out to be unusable. So therefore, lots of, of studies is just I mean, either reviewed or guessing or, or whatever. The reform, actually, I, I, want, I, want, but I don't want to go very far from this. But uh, this is important for everybody who, who doesn't meta-analyze it. What was that screen? Why are those data are not usable? Uh, well, actually, they, they, uh, for, for, for your fir first question, it's yeah. so little, these numbers, because uh, most of the articles, uh, in most of the articles, uh, the patient was treated with, uh, with vitamin K antagonists, super buffer. And uh, drugs are only, we use drugs from the 2010s, from the beginning of the uh, uh, 2010s. And uh, right now, there are just a few articles uh, with these, but for sure, uh, these medications would the future. So we have to focus on this one. And, uh, and uh, well, the third three, the, the, uh, what we mentioned, we are we just wrote some writers whether they can give us the, uh, give us the, the rough data and from which we can uh, get the data. So the data are not available? Well, they, they, uh, they publish in that way. We can't really know that, okay, how, how, how many exactly, how patient were uh, on the, this or that side.